So today I'm kind of torn on what I want to do. I've got this uh, rear license plate mount for the FC and I've got my radium remote filler and I need to figure out how to mount this. So I think I'm going to mount this like an old 68 GTO my dad had where the fuel filler was tucked behind the license plate. And it looks like I'd have enough angle to shoot down to my filler. And I think that'd be a good spot for it. So I need to cut a large enough hole in this to allow this diameter to pass through it. And then it'll get mounted to the body on the inside. So I've got this to do. And I've also got the front end to work on. I just need to take this nice laser cut part from Sand Cut Send and weld on the sides and then attach it inside of the frame rail before the whole front assembly is totally done and we can move on to intercooler piping, exhaust, all the fuel lines and oil lines to the coolers and everything. So lots of cool stuff once that's mounted, can get the bumper fitted up. So I'm gonna kind of work back and forth between these two things for this video. So we got this thing not oriented yet, but in the, just a perfect fit. Nice little resistance on it. So now I gotta mock this up on the car and make my hole in the body. All right, just so I have everything lined up right. Now I can mark where the outside of that fuel filler was. Now I do not have a three inch hole saw, but I do have a one and a half. All right, so we've got the hole drilled and our cap fits in really nice. The next thing that we have to do is, um, obviously I've got my mounting hole here, so I wanna clock this thing so that the actual mounting plate behind it doesn't interfere with those. So I'll do something like this and um, now I can use a transfer punch to punch right through and get my hole positions accurate. If you don't know what a transfer punch is, they come in these sets. They're super cheap on Amazon. You just can size the outer diameter with your hole and it helps you maintain concentricity and alignment. So everything stays where it should be. Okay, so uh, turns out 30 year old plastic does not like being drilled through. So a uh, new game plan. So as you saw, the plastic did not like being drilled through. So I had to go about it a little bit differently. I decided to just cut out the outside of the trim piece there. And it still looks really nice. It's all flush against the red piece here. And I've got all of the holes drilled and everything is in. Um, it's not super clean. This is kind of gross. It's all sticking out. It's just not how I like to do things. So we're gonna take it one step further. 3D scan this whole surface and model something up. So recently I picked up this Revopoint Pop 2 3D scanner and this is like a kind of the bottom end in terms of 3D scanners. It's like 650 bucks, uh, which is pretty cheap in the world of 3D scanning. And I think the next one I get will probably be the Peel 3D. It's like a $10,000 scanner. It goes up dramatically in price, but it's still only middle of the road. Um, good for hobbyists like me. So. I'm going to use this 3D scanner to try and get a really good um, scan of the trunk and improve our the way that we're mounting this radium fuel filler nozzle. So right now uh, I've got it all mounted in with the stock uh, included bracket. 
which works well for certain situations. But for me, um, the way I'm locating it, the way that my bolt holes are, you know, peeking through the side of that sheet metal, it doesn't look very good. So we're going to try and do better and just 3D scan this whole surface so that I can 3D model a 3D printed replacement. Okay, so here's our finished 3D scan. And as you can see, we're missing a bunch. And I noticed that when I started scanning it and I should have used a 3D scanner spray or something to prep it, but I had noticed from the scan that I could really see the outline of my bolt hole locations. And since we're using 3D printing, it's really easy to make a change if, if something is slightly off. But this was good enough for me. And it was enough to start modeling and getting things squared up. So here is the radium fuel filler nozzle. And I also worked on this cover so it can cover up all of my nasty holes in the side of the plate and just give it a little bit more of a presentable appearance. So for a first prototype, I think this is good. So I'm gonna set this up on the 3D printer and give it a go. So in the future, if this is something you wanna see more about, how to go from 3D scan to 3D model to 3D print, it's a whole process that involves a couple different programs. But if that's something you guys are interested in, drop a comment below. I didn't record the 3D printing process, but this is the first prototype. So it looks like I missed some concentricity on my SOLIDWORKS model. And so I'll have to fix that. And for the final version, I'm gonna change the material type to something like carbon fiber, uh, nylon maybe, or PETG or something a little bit better with temperature. And then I'll also line up uh, my witness lines there instead of being where they are, I will uh, put them on the very bottom. But overall, pretty happy with this. Uh, this is obviously not the color of the final one, but it's what I had in the machine already. So let's check it out and see how it fits. This turned out really good for a first prototype. It's all pretty well centered, um, covers up all the ugly sheet metal that I wanted. And I think I'm gonna get different bolts uh, that are Allen head instead and shorter. And then I'm gonna counter bore these holes, instead of having the nut on the outside, I'll have the nut, um, you know, recessed. So it'll look a lot better. Uh, you know, a black carbon fiber nylon will look good, but overall super happy with how this thing turned out. So that's pretty much it for our fuel cell. I am super happy with the way this turned out. And uh, I think I'm gonna hold off a little bit on the floor setup. It's just a really big template to try to make and figure out. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do any 3D scanning for that or not, but I'll come back to that for now. Let's go to the front and I'm gonna work on this upper radiator support. So I already had this cut from send, cut, send. I have my side pieces that are gonna get bolted inside of the frame rails. This should be a pretty quick job. This chamfer looks super nice. It'll look great on the outside, but can you see it from the inside is what I'm wondering. It looks, it looks like you can a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the inside. The problem with doing the inside is that I have to leave this one unchampered because the head touches this wall so I can't touch the whole thing. But uh, yeah, the little details matter. I know not everyone would take the time to do this, but I care, so we're gonna do it. These pieces look 10 times better now that they're all chamfered. So all these are prepped and um, basically now I just have to I think use some magnets, get this thing all lined up, and then uh, clamp it up and tack it.
got the corners all welded on and blended. Those turned out pretty good. I do have just a little bit of off center um, with the radiator, so whatever. One side's a little bit longer, but not a big deal. And this carbon fiber piece went in really nice. That's just all fastened on the back side. I got pretty lucky because I barely tapped that thing. It's it's uh, it's maybe like 200,000 steep, so that was kind of difficult to do. I did only use one faster on each side. Uh, that's because if you can see in here, it's just not flat against my plate. So I think I'm gonna wait until this engine comes out and I prep the engine bay for paint and do my last little bits of grinding and hole filling and everything. And I'll just create a more of a flush surface there and then uh, have something to actually fasten uh, to this in two locations. So. That'll be a little bit better. It's really strong right now, but it could be a little bit better. I've got the whole Small Crimes crew. They're the drift team uh, that I've drifted with since 2019. So uh, they're coming over this weekend and we're gonna start attacking all of the body panels. So I've got Blake Olson fenders that are going on front and rear. I've got the BN rep kit that fits like garbage. And um, gonna do a bumper cut. Got side skirts up in the attic, I gotta get down. So just gonna be prepping uh, in the next couple of hours for them to come over tomorrow. And we're all just gonna, you know, team up on the car and get all the body stuff done, get the subframe prepped for the 88 and the Ronin kit. And uh, yeah, see how far we get, so. All right, we got the whole small crimes group here. We got Brian working on some 88 axles. We got Tanner cutting up the 88 for the Ronin kit. Got Dusty, he's drilling holes in the fenders. Spencer, like drilling all the holes for the rear fenders. Got the whole crew here. The whole Small Crimes crew really came through for me this weekend and put in a lot of hours in one day on this car. And it's looking sweet. I cannot believe how good it looks. And to finally have a kit on this car, it's some big Johns, it just looks awesome. Now the fronts are 18s for the rear. So that's not actually what's gonna go on the car. I do have some 17 inch VSKFs that'll be building specific for this front end with the FDF kit to get all the angle I can out of it. So. This is just for mock-up and for looks for now, but man, it is sweet. It's cool to see it even with a you know shitty fitting kit on it right now. I can't do the full front bumper fitment yet. I gotta wait for my hood to get here. I do have a uh, carbon fiber hood coming and I still gotta take care of a little bit of body work on that side, but super cool for a little mock-up. So while Spencer and Dustin were putting on body panels, Tanner worked on the 88 Explorer diff, had to do a lot of cutting and blending to get this thing to fit up properly on the Ronin kit. And Brian and I spent all freaking day on these axles. I do not have the proper tools, so we worked too hard on those, but now it's done. So it's nice to finally have this car in more of a mock-up stage to get the final picture of it. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you for following along. I hope you're enjoying this type of content as much as I do. Stick around for the next video. I've got a lot of TIG welding and fab coming up and an exciting new sponsorship announcement.